If you're an architect and create renders, you have made at least one of these next seven mistakes. Most architects have a very messed up rendering process. Sometimes they start with setting up the materials, then get to lighting, then import some 3D models, then go back to cleaning up some of the geometry. Then maybe you move on to some color correction, then choose the angle that you want to take the render from. Worse than all, <laughs> some architects don't even have a clue what process they should follow. All of these approaches are wrong. You should always start with the composition. When you know exactly what angle you're going to pick, you will increase your efficiency because everything that the camera will not capture is basically not existent to you. So you will not waste time with parts that you will not capture in the final render. So mistake number one, not setting up composition as the first step. Everyone thinks that in order to create a good looking render, you have to use super complicated software that has a gazillion options in the user interface and calculates light bounces in a certain type of way. That is completely wrong. And since I am in this topic, if you're an architect, I urge you to stop using 3S Max. You just do not need it, ever. Having a complicated software doesn't make you better. It just makes you less efficient. That's why I highly advise you to stay away from software like 3S Max, V-Ray or Corona and just stick to anything that is fast and easy. I personally believe that using something like Enscape or D5 works best for all architects. So mistake number two is using a complicated software. When rendering, you usually need a lot of experimentation and testing since renders are more as a solution to your design process rather than just a final picture that you hang in your office wall. While rendering, you will need to use certain types of materials, certain types of light sources, HRIs, IS profiles, and a bunch of other acronyms that make you vomit to rate. However, there are ways that you can simplify all of this by setting up your library once and for all and having a system of the resources that you use. I suggest ambientcg.com as a source for materials because it's free and it has almost everything that you will need. And I highly suggest that you choose the same five sky boxes that you use all the time for lighting because that is basically all you need in your process. So do not downplay resources you need to have them set up and structured in a folder where you can access them easily because they play a huge role in your rendering efficiency and quality. Now we have all been through PC crashes and forgetting to save files and losing hours of your precious hard work and I can truly imagine all the blame that your PC takes for that. When I started out, I had a $400 PC that I created these renders and it allowed me to finish over 100 projects in over 30 countries in just the first year. And I've seen plenty of other architects being able to do the same within the same circumstances and hardware. So unless you have a potato PC, I can promise you that you are just not using the right workflow and the right software that your PC can handle to create great looking renders. And of course, having a strong machine can help. However, it is not a requirement and it should never be a barrier for architects to not create realistic renders. I know that every single one of you have come to a point at least once where you know that something is not right with the renders, but you just don't know what it is. And you can tell that it does not look good, but you do not know exactly what you have to fix. So you spend a lot of time and effort just testing things out, experimenting, and basically playing a guessing game to try and fix your renders. How much easier would it be if someone would just tell you exactly what you need to fix? However, being in that situation is not the worst. You cannot imagine how many times I have spent hours in a render thinking that it looked perfect just to show it to other people and be absolutely disappointed that their jaws didn't drop. So no matter how long you have been running for and how good you get at it, you will always and always come to a point that you suffer from eye soreness where you do not notice the obvious elements that just do not look right. I've had so much of my renders corrected even from people who had no clue how to create renders or had nothing to do with architecture. They just had a fresh eye and could point out things that didn't look right. Imagine how much faster I would improve if I just had someone to give me feedback to my renders. Earlier, we talked about choosing the right software and staying away from 3ds Max, V-Ray and Corona. However, I do not blame architects that get caught up in that torture chamber. The truth is that most of the times that you see hyper-realistic render, it is done with 3ds Max or V-Ray with Corona. However, there is something that you need to realize. These software are fully optimized for Arvis artists. People that 
only create renders as part of their job. They are fully optimized for the final quality. And the Arcvis artists usually create these renders are asked by their clients to deliver them for real estate listings or even for architecture competitions where you have to submit a final render. However, that is not what an architect's real life looks like. You always have to go through iterations and feedback loops and waiting an hour for a single render is just not viable. That's why quality and only quality of your renders should never be your goal. Your goal should be to aim for a great time to quality ratio meaning that you get the most amount of quality for the least amount of time spent in your render. And here's exactly why aiming for a time to quality ratio makes you a better architect. When you're able to create renders faster, you will improve as an architect faster since you will implement changes faster. You can tweak materials faster and you can have overall much faster feedback loops. Now think about this. While another architect takes four hours to go through one render, you create that same render five times and apply five rounds of feedback within those same hours. Do you know what that means? It means that you are improving five times faster in your design skills than everyone else. Most of you are trying to improve your skills in YouTube. While YouTube is a great place and it allows everyone to learn from amazing tutorials like mine, there are hidden costs when you're trying to learn everything in YouTube. First off, the videos are never in the right order and they will just not match your skill set. You will never know which of the issues and skill deficiencies to tackle first, and on top of that, you get all of these distractions, ads, recommendations, plus no one out there is giving you exercises you need to turn theory into skills. So stop trying to learn rendering from YouTube. These issues are exactly why I created the seven day Rendering for Architects program. This is the world's best rendering program. We will teach you every aspect of rendering process for architects in just seven days with affordable PC and simple software. We are talking about trainings that are covered in a seven day agenda where you will not have to spend time on unnecessary fluff. It is cut down to the essentials and the exact tasks that make the difference between what your renders look right now and how they will look like in seven days. And in just those seven days, I guarantee that you will learn more than in seven months on YouTube or I give you your money back, no questions asked. Now, I know what you are thinking. What if I cannot get through all the content in the seven days? That's totally fine because you get lifetime access to all of the lessons inside the program and the ones that I will be adding in the future. So you can watch rewatch and pace yourself as much as you like. There are more than a thousand students inside of the community learning new skills, improving their existing skills and getting better jobs or getting clients from them. But most importantly, they're all growing and supporting each other in our private community. Here's exactly what you're going to learn in day to day basis. On day one, you will learn all the basics of 3D modeling in SketchUp. Even if you do not use SketchUp as a modeling software, all of the lessons are applicable since you will learn how to 3D model assets which your clients require or even unlock secret sources of 3D models that I will show you where you can find ready to use 3D assets. On day two, up next we'll cover composition, setting up views that emphasize your design and makes people stop scrolling. You can switch image moods in just one click and learn efficiency methods that will 10x your workflow so you can deliver everything faster than other architects and get a huge competitive edge. Day three covers how you can use material library to import materials in just one click, how to add imperfections to make them look just like real life, and how to set up advanced materials like curtains, carpets, grass, etc. On day four, we'll break down lighting and we will cover this complicated science in super simple steps. You will learn how to use HRIs to mimic a real world environment and you will get access to my library of HRIs and learn how to optimize them for realistic lighting. On day five, we will learn all the color correction techniques to achieve a balanced look and we will take advantage of special effects like fog, bloom, wind, etc. All of these to make the renders more dynamic. So no more guessing around with these settings get a clear guide and know how to use them forever. On day six, we'll set up a nighttime exterior scene. You will not need to pray that your client doesn't ask for a nighttime render. Instead, you'll get the whole step-by-step -step process to create nighttime scenes just like these. On day seven, we'll go through rendering post-production. I'll show you some AI tools that will get you renders from this to this in just one click. And I will show you how to use Photoshop to make fixes fast and easy. I know that you might be thinking, which software do you teach and is it expensive to get? Well, when you join, you will get to choose whether you want to learn Enscape, 
or DeFi. Then you will get the seven day program for whichever software that you choose. They are both very fast, very easy to learn and can run in an affordable PC. So they are really the world's best, fastest and easiest software out there. And Snape has a 14 day free trial and DeFi Render has a version that is just as good as the paid one. So you'll be totally fine and covered in that department. But that is not it because inside you will get access to challenges and quizzes which will improve your running skills on the daily. These are just not a bunch of pre-recorded theoretical videos because you will also unlock $10,000 worth of exercise files and you will get a full view how professional set up scenes and use the models inside the files. In the course, you also get to really turn the theory into skill and that's why you also get access to our Render for Architects private community where I will give you feedback on your renders by rendering professionals so you do not spend time guessing on what you need to improve. So right now you have two options. You can either continue trying to learn through YouTube lessons that are not in the right order, do not match your skill set with all the distractions that it has, or you can learn Rending for Architects in just seven days get access to over $10,000 worth of exercise files and get your renders reviewed by professionals in this field. And if this sounds like something that you want to do, click the first link in the description.